Good afternoon, viewers. This afternoon, we are continuing with uh, science, technology, and society. In the first series, we have been able to see the meaning of science, technology, and society. As well, we have been able to know the meaning of inventions, discovery. And we conclude by saying that the type of technology that is in the society depends on the environment. In this second series, we shall be looking at the importance, importance of science and technology in the society. So it will be very important for us to know the importance or positive effects of science and technology in the society. Number one, it is through science and technology that we have mechanization of agriculture through labor saving machines. For example, in those days, they make use of uh, crude tools to produce science and technology. But today, we have been able to make use of mechanized way by introducing tractors to help us on the farmland. The second importance of science and technology is that through science and technology, we have improved medical facilities and care. Also, we have improved transportation system, as well as provisions of electrical and electronic materials. For example, television, radio, computer, and so on and so forth. Also, through science and technology, there is improved communication system. That is, the introduction of GSM, which is known as Global System for Mobile Communication, as well as Internet, and so on and so forth. Information technology has turned the world into a global village due to easy access to information and communication in any part of the world. So we should appreciate the effort of science and technology in our society. Also, in as much that we have been able to see the importance of science and technology, we also have some negative effects or disadvantages or problems caused by science and technology. For example, environmental pollution, that is industrial, domestic, and so on and so forth. As much as science and technology is very important, we also have the negative aspect. Through science and technology, we experience environmental pollution, like those companies that produce things on a large scale. Those uh, foams that comes out of the production machine and what have you, they cause environmental pollution. We also experience accident, for example, on the road, by on the in the air, then on what on water, then electrical and so on and so forth. So accident to occur as a reduction as a result of science and technology. And because of science and technology, we have lost our craft craftsmanship. That is, people don't want, no longer want to produce things using their hands. They now depend majorly on machine. We also have destruction of natural habitats, like chemicals destroying the habitat and things in the water, like fish and what have you. Then production of killer weapons. It is due to science and technology that we are able to produce killer weapons like nuclear, biological, and so on and so forth. Now it will, be, it will interest you to know that the first atomic bomb to be invented was used to destroy Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan in 1945 during the Second World War. These are the negative aspects of science and technology. Now we want to see how this problem of science and technology could be solved. Number one, waste should be properly disposed. 
You see, if we really appreciate the effort of science and technology, we should try to maintain it. And how can we maintain it? It is when we use the product of science and technology very well. So we need to see how this problem that science and technology as critical can be solved. So when we are trying to dispose our waste, we should dispose it properly. We should not just dispose it anywhere. We should get a dustbin. We should get areas whereby we need to drop our waste. People should be very careful while using the materials of science and technology. So when we, whenever we are making use of things created by science and technology, we should be careful so that we use them very well. Then natural habitats should be protected from any contamination. Also, the use of ants to produce things should be encouraged as well as the use of machines. In as much that we are appreciating what science and technology is doing for us, we should also be able to still encourage the use of arm to produce some things. We should not just completely eradicate the use of arms, and that is craftsmanship. Then, production of killer weapons should be stopped or properly regulated. Now, we are going to be seeing the aspects of concept of transfer of technology or technology transfer. The concept of transfer of technology or technology transfer, this refers to the practice of copying the knowledge of science and technology from other countries for the purpose of using it in a particular country. It will interest you that some companies, they will send some people abroad to learn about a particular use of a technology. And after the training, it is expected that people should, they should come back to our country to train other people. And this is very, very important. People should be trained in other people's way of handling their technology. And this will bring about development in our country. And that is the reason for this concept of transfer of technology. So anytime some people are sent out to learn about a particular technology and returning back to our country to be able to train others, that is known as transfer of technology. Many developing countries are involved in technology transfer in order to manufacture some goods at home for their uses. They are, it's very good because we are trying to develop our society. We are trying to use what we have to ensure that things are going well as expected. Just as we know that man is curious, he wants to do things in a new way. So because man wants to do things in a new way, then there is need for us to be able to, to learn or get knowledge of how to make use of those things that are produced in other countries. And this will take us to some inventions of the world. For example, in 1793, Eli Whitney, he invented the cotton gin. So Eli Whitney was able to invent the cotton gin in 1793. In 1816, Renan Lennart invented the stethoscope. Also in 1825, George Stevenson invented the railway. In 1867, Christopher L. Shaw invented the typewriter. These are people that have been able to invent different things in the world. In 1903, Wilbur and Overwright, the two American brothers, they invented the aeroplane. 
1967, John Shepard Baron invented the automated teller machine, which is known as ATM. In 1969, the United States Department of Defense Advanced Research Project Agency invented the internet. This is just little out of many inventions of the world. So, in this series, I want to believe that you have been able to understand what we mean by science, technology, and society. And after now, we should be able to appreciate the advantages of science and technology in our society so that our living condition can improve and people will be able to appreciate what we are doing. Thank you for listening. Watch out for the next series.